Alright guys, Casmo here and welcome to the channel and welcome to DCS Liberation version 2.2.0. Now if you're anything like me, you had no idea this thing even existed until a couple weeks ago. Um, I had no idea there was a dynamic campaign generator. I've seen videos where guys were talking about a liberation campaign and I just always assumed it was a, a you know, a third party campaign generator or, or a third party campaign uh, that somebody created, you know, with pre-scripted missions. I had no idea that it was a generator. Uh, until I watched uh, a video, I think it was uh, Samurai 1-1, uh, was, was playing a mission on it, and I realized, holy cow, this is a generator. So I went ahead and downloaded it, took a look at it, and then of course, naturally, like most things that I download, uh, about two weeks later, a new version popped up, and it was completely different. Uh, not completely different, but but certainly different than, than what I was used to. So I wanted to uh, put this video out because I've talked to so many people on my Discord who kind of were like me. They they'd heard of it, they knew the name, but they really didn't know too much about it. And the more we dug into it, the more we started talking about it, uh, everyone kind of realized like, holy cow, this thing has a lot of potential. So I wanted to talk you through it and hopefully exposed a bunch of you to this new thing that is, is just pretty awesome. Uh, but first I want to thank everybody who supported the channel so far. And if you're new to the channel, uh, please check out some of the other videos and tell me what you think. And uh, if you have been around for a while, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything and it really helps me out and helps the channel grow. So I appreciate that. All right, so we're going to open up Liberation and this is what we're going to see. We're going to see these multiple windows that don't have anything in it because we haven't built a campaign yet. So we're going to go up here in the plus sign hit that and we've got the wizard here's the wizard right there he's gonna help us and right here we're gonna choose our factions and what you want to do is kinda of go through and you can see there's just a ton of factions and of course these uh, directly relate to different modules at different time periods uh, just be careful that you look here and make sure that you're getting what you want so for instance if I want to run a campaign where I can fly K-50s on the blue side and I need to find something that enables that. So right here, for instance, we'll say Blue Form Modern. We can take a look, and it's got a lot of other jets uh, that we could be using. So on the uh, enemy faction, again, we can pick pretty much the same things. And uh, what I thought was really interesting is some of these say modded, or they say with World War II weapons. But uh, this modded one, you know, it takes you, it's got a link to the file, so you can actually get what that mod is very easy instead of having to hunt and peck for it. All right, so we're just going to pick Russia 2010. We got Blue 4 Modern. Okay, good. Next. All right, here we can pick our map, and we have different scenarios for those maps. And we'll go ahead and pick Syria Inherent Resolve. We can see here a number of control points, and that'll make more sense here in a few minutes. Uh, it gives us a little bit of information about the scenario. And we can do some things like invert the map. I'm not really sure what that's about. And uh, start date, you know, we'll just keep it what it is. All right, next, uh, we don't want to start mid-game. We do want aircraft carriers. Uh, we want to use the super carrier module. We're going to leave the money where it is. I'll explain what that does here in a few minutes. And we'll just leave all the other stuff blank. All right, so we're ready to go. We're just going to generate the mission and see what we get. All right, so here we go. And I will tell you, every time you do this, it is different because every time I've done it, I've gotten completely different uh, enemy layouts. Now, that control... Uh, points. The, the nodes are going to be the same. Um, we're always going to have Incirlik, we're always going to have King Hussein, and of course we did choose to have these carriers and all these other cities going to be the same, but the layout of these uh, support nodes, if you will, and the enemy air defense positions are going to change. They're going to change what they are as, uh, as you build these scenarios. So you see right here we've got some SA-11s at this site, and we've got some other uh, resource nodes. Uh, but before we talk about that, we will talk about resources in general. So we've got this budget, uh, 650 million, and then we're going to gain 209 million on every subsequent turn. So this says turn one, but really it's going into turn one. This is the initial setup, if you will. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to one of these nodes, to King Hussein, and we're going to grab some ground forces. And we're going to just start stocking up on some things. So we're going to pick some martyrs, some strikers, some trucks, and just to give us something to put on the ground. All right, so now we're going to check out the airfield command, and we're going to get some aircraft here. So we're going to pick some A-10C uh, models, uh, or two Cs. Uh, we'll get some F-15s, some F-16s. All right, and you can see that it's creating a number here, but that number hasn't translated over here, and that's because we're in the initial phase. We're spending the money now. It's not going to happen until the next turn. So uh, we want to spend all the money that we can now, and I'm not going to worry too much about it because I'm not planning to play this campaign. Uh, but you would want to spin that down as close to zero as you can. So we'll add some F-14s, we'll add a bunch of F-18s, and yeah, that should be good. All right, so we've 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 built up our forces. We'll go ahead and build some up here so I can show you a trick later. 
Uh, let's tell you what. Let's take some B ones, and that's all. That's all we got. Tell you what. Let's save our money for that, and we'll pick something else. How about that? Okay, that'll work. All right. So we've spent pretty much most of our money anyway. But you can see we've got all these nodes. So as I said, these resources, and then 209 million is what we're going to earn every turn. And that's what these things are kind of doing for us. So we'll take a look here. Uh, this is Location Butterfly. Uh, it has these nodes here, and these are what's generating money. So if we look up here at Details, there's a Power Butterfly. Five buildings, four million apiece. So each one of those buildings at Butterfly, which I don't remember where it was, uh, is worth four million a piece and these are things that can actually be struck and bombed because this guy same thing he's got location corral those are probably about four million a piece and that is something we can hit all right so we've gotten our forces we've spent our money we're not going to mess with this just yet because uh, we're going to go ahead and go into the first turn so here it is zero six hundred on the first of april 2010 past turn boom now it is noon and you can see that we've populated some packages and that's what these blue lines represent so let's go ahead and pick uh, the one coming off the LHA. Uh, so we've got a flight of two Harriers doing a uh, destroy enemy air defense mission. And this is the time on target from start. I, th I think this is essentially saying 48 minutes from the start of the server. So there's some weird numbers that I haven't kind of figured out the, the flow of this yet. Uh, so don't quote me on that. Uh, but we'll close this down, take a look at these packages, and you can see up here we've we've gotten more money. So like I said, 209 plus whatever we had is, is 224. All right, so these are our packages, and this is kind of interesting, and this is a new addition from the older version uh, that it creates these packages, which are really sometimes made up of multiple flights. So let's see if it has any multiple flight packages. Okay, here we go. So CAS, Frontline, so there's actually multiple flights creating this one total package. So this is a CAS package, frontline. So there's the frontline right there. We've got a TAR cap. I'm not sure what the TAR means, but a combat air patrol of F-16s. And they apparently are going to be providing support for these A-10s that are actually going to be doing the CAS. And you can see the routes there. So these two flights make up this package. And then we've got, okay, there's our Harrier flight. And the same thing, they're going to be doing that destroy of enemy, destruction of enemy air defense mission, and they're going to be escorted by F-18s from the John Stennis. And this is another thing I thought was really cool, is you can see here we've got a bar cap of the Saipan, which is our LHA, but it's actually from the Stennis. So they're launching Hornets to do a patrol that's going to, you know, quote-unquote protect uh, the LHA. So I thought it was pretty neat. All of these right now are AI-flown aircraft. You know, you could hit past turn, and it's going to go on to the next turn, and... You know, the AI is essentially going to fly the missions, if you will. But we don't want to do that. So we're going to pick our Destruction of Enemy Air Defense mission. And we're going to pick the Harriers. I double-clicked on that. And we can take a look at it. So we've got a deed mission. And here's where it's from. Here's the time. Blah, blah, blah. Aircraft count is going to be two. We could go ahead and increase that if we wanted to. We can also increase the client. So I can make this a single-player mission. Or I can make it a multiplayer mission by adding clients. I can change this to wherever I want. So I'm going to be a warm start. I can mess with the payloads, or I can do it in the mission editor. And I can sort of mess with the waypoints. I haven't really figured out what I can do with this. I know it adds. It says you can add, but I haven't really had it do anything. But you're going to do all this stuff in the generator anyway, so it's really kind of a moot point. All right, so that's it. So now we've got that set, and it's player slots too. Well, let's say i got two other buddies that actually want to do the escort mission. Well, same deal. I'm just going to go in there. I'm going to add some client accounts. I'm going to make them warm. And we can do whatever, we can do whatever there. And now we've got four player slots, two for the escort, two for that. We could do that f really for any of these flights. If As long as the guys have the modules and it's flyable in DCS, uh, we can do that. All right, so before we hit takeoff, which is what's going to basically activate the mission, we're going to go up here to settings because there's a few things we need to do. All right, so we're going to leave the skill alone. Uh, I'm going to turn the labels off. I am going to leave this off because I, I want night missions. Uh, I'm going to change this to Fog of War. External views is good. All right, Mission Generator. Yes, we're using Super Carrier. Uh, never delay player flight. So in some cases, your flight actually takes off later than some of the, the AI flights, and this will cause you to delay. It won't let you get in the cockpit. Uh, it's like a late activation. So I'm just going to click that off because I don't, I don't like that. Um, I'm going to leave this on just so I can show you why you should turn it off. So Smoke Visual Effect on Frontline. We'll leave that on. Uh, we'll leave all this other stuff on except generate infantry squads. 
Um, I think that's just an FPS killer. It's just going to add a lot of stuff that, that I don't necessarily care about. All right, culling of distant units enabled. So I'm going to turn this on, and we're going to leave it for 100 kilometers. And I'm going to show you what that means here in a second. Let me check all this other stuff. There's really nothing that I want to mess with here. And I'm going to turn that off. All right, so that culling of distant units. We can see that way up here we had this bar cap flight that was happening in Incirillic. And the enemy, of course, is also going to have missions that are going to be generated. You'll see them in a the mission generator. By turning on that culling, it, it basically turns off everything outside of 100 uh, kilometers of the, I, I guess, the, the player, the client mission. Um, so that's another way to kind of save some frame rates and, and keep your computer from overworking. All right, so we've created our missions. We've manned them. We've done everything we need to do. We could spend the more money. In fact, I highly suggest that we go ahead and do that now, but I'm not going to. And then we're going to hit take off. All right, so if we are doing a single player mission, all we're going to do is go into DCS, go into the mission editor, and find this file. And it's going to create this file every single time that we create a mission. It's going to overwrite the last one. Then we're just going to, from the mission editor, hit fly, fly the mission, and that'll be it. And it'll, it'll read the results. Now, since we're going to do a multiplayer, we're kind of going to do the same thing. We're going to go to Mission Editor. We're going to go to that file. We're going to save it, or we're going to make some adjustments, which I'm always going to make some adjustments. Um, I'm going to move you know, some waypoints around. I'm going to add some things to the payload, whatever. But whatever you're going to do, you need to save. Even if you do nothing, you need to save the file. Then you're going to host the server. Now, you can use this on a dedicated server. We have kind of figured out the magic uh, to make that happen, but I'm not going to talk about that here because I'm not too smart on it, but we'll do that in the future. It says here, the step in... This step in mission, well, it should be this step in the mission editor is important and fixes a game breaking bug. So make sure you save, make sure you host. All right, and then finishing, this window will change once we're in DCS and flying the mission. And you'll see what that means here in a minute. And what we're going to do is leave this alone and we're going to start up DCS and I'll show you what the rest of it does. All right, so we've loaded up DCS. We're going to go to the mission editor, open mission, and like I said, we're looking for this file right here, liberation next turn dot miz, and we can just verify that it is the right map, and this is the time, 2300, that is correct, and we're going to just open that puppy up, and then you're going to see that all of those missions within that um, exclusion zone, uh, or whatever it was called, is, is going to uh, appear here. So we've got our map, and there we can see... Uh, this is the front line, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but there's all those enemy forces, and there's those uh, facilities that we talked about. In fact, that's the facility that we are going to attack. Or, oh, it's not really a facility, an SA-11 site, because we're doing a deed mission. Uh, but you can see that this is the deed, uh, or that's the escort flight, and then this is the deed flight. So we're going to take off and apparently join with these guys here. And again, this was our... Uh, client players. Let's see if we can find them. There we go. F-18s, client. And we'll select, there's the seed mission, client. So it's done all that for us. And we're going to link up in flight and hit this location here and then egress back to the ship. Now, like we said, outside of 100 kilometers, there should be nothing. And as you can see, there was a mission up here in Cyrillic. And it's just removed that from the, the mission file. So we don't have to worry about that kind of gumming up the, uh, the computer. Okay, so down here, like I told you, uh, the smoke. This is what I'm talking about. That is a ton of smoke. And I can imagine for my VR uh, friends, this is a FPS killer. So that's a ton of smoke. So that's why I say on that setting, I would uh, click that off. But I left it on just to show what it's going to do. So here we can see all these ground forces. And these are essentially those guys that we bought. If we didn't buy any, then none of this would be here. And these guys would be able to do more damage than, than, than not. Of course, we did have that cast mission. So let's see. There we go. There's F-15s. I don't remember those guys doing anything. Some F-16s. I thought there was some a 10 Okay. There's the A-10s. And as you can see, they are working the front line. And that is their cast mission. So like we said, uh, for a multiplayer event, we're going to make any adjustments. And what we could do, I mean, it's quite simply, we could remove some of these enemy fighters. We could add some stuff. Though I think I would shy away from adding stuff. It may kind of screw up the, the calculus. But, but taking stuff out, I don't think is that big of a deal. Um, and we're going to have everything set up. If we need to change our payloads, change our comm frequencies, all that good stuff, we can get it ready to go. And we're going to save the file, open up our own server, and run that file. Um, I am going to just launch it from here just so that I can launch it, close it down, and show you what the generator looks like when you're done with the mission. So stand by, I'll be right back. 
All right, mission is complete, mission is over, uh, and basically I just jumped in and then turned it off. So you're not going to see any results because nothing was running long enough for there to be any results. But you can see this is the window that's going to be waiting for you when you get done with your mission. So you can abort. Uh, let's say that you were just testing the mission out, but you don't want the results to actually count. You abort this and it just kind of wipes away everything for that turn and you, you kind of start the turn over. Uh, you can accept these results or, and this is where I think the dedicated server... Uh, or, or maybe some sort of weird setting you have on your computer uh, it comes into play, but advanced users man, uh, manually submit. So the file that it's looking for is this state.json file, um, and it's popping up here in the liberation folder. Uh, but that's what it's looking for, and so uh, from what I understand, and again, I'm not smart on it, but you can drag this from your dedicated server, put it back on here, and, uh, and, and read it from your generator. All right, we're going to cancel out of that, we're just going to accept results just to see what happens and yep and so this is going to pop up and again if there were losses and, and things it's going to tell us there we're hit okay and let's get back into the generator okay so it's going to tell us that we had some unused aircraft uh there's some other stuff that, that didn't happen because we don't have enough aircraft to do it but anyway if it you know if we, let's say we did kill all the sa11s all that stuff would be here in the info panel and we can drag that out and make that easier to read. Okay, so we've completed all those missions. It's going to populate all that information into the generator, uh, make sure that we spend all of our money, and at this point we can really just roll on to the next turn. So we'll hit pass turn, and now because we did select night missions enabled or, or you know we allow them, uh, we can see that now it's 03, and uh, it is a night mission, and we've created a new mission sets. We've got some other packages so uh, you know once again we're going to strike that target because we didn't destroy it the first time. Uh, we've got some some other assets going on. I didn't pay attention to the front line uh, but it probably moved a little bit this way just because we didn't actually do anything. Now let's say that we want to do something different. Let's say for whatever reason we want to hit this target or we want to actually do some more casts. All we have to do is create a new package and of course we can delete some of these so let's just say we want to get rid of that just to free up some assets and we want to strike this target so we're going to right click here new package and we can add a flight to it and we can mess with the time on target uh, again I'm not too smart on how that plays out in this so I'm just going to leave it blank and see what happens alright so we're going to do a strike mission and this is what we have available I wish we had this available to fly but we're going to go with the Harrier and it's instantly telling us that we have four of those at the side pan because we don't have anyone uh, anywhere else. So yeah, we'll take that. We could increase that. We're not going to. We're going to make that a two client slot. We're going to create. Uh, if we wanted to add a barn cap to that, we could grab some of these hornets and create that and save. And now we've got that target uh, package, that uh, strike package on target coral, which apparently is this one. Yes, it is. Okay, so. So anyway, and you know, it's the same process as before. If you want to change that to clients, do whatever. Um, yeah, so that's basically it in a nutshell, and it's pretty amazing. Um, it, it it breathes a lot of new life into the game. I'm super excited about it. Uh, other guys that, that we've uh, you know kind of showed this to are super excited. We're starting our own little campaign within the low-level held uh, Discord community. A few of us have, have flown a couple missions, and we're getting ready to do another one here soon. And uh, it's just a pretty thing, and hey, it's free. So... Uh, you know, throw some support uh, to the guy that creates it. In fact, I can't remember his name. I think it's right here, Arthur Copa. And I just discovered they have a Discord about an hour ago, so I was going to take a look at that. Uh, I'm sure they've got some sort of Patreon page set up, so, you know, if, if you play around with this and enjoy it as much as I think you're going to, you know, throw a few dollar bills his way as a way to say thank you for the hard work, because this is incredible. And uh, it, it got a facelift here with this latest update. And uh, obviously a lot of love going into it. So anyway, I hope you enjoy it. I appreciate you paying attention and uh, sticking with me. And we'll talk to you guys later. Take care.